What up guys, what up, what up? Guys, in today's video, this is part of the multi-part series video that I've been working on on the uh, Office 365 API. This is gonna be part six. So in this video, we're gonna walk through the process and we're gonna create a function to give us back file properties. So for example, some of the properties that we're gonna have, that we're gonna pull back is gonna be file name, file size, uh, when the file was created, uh, the file ID, um, what else? I think there's like one more, but either way, we're going to be pulling some of those file properties and you're going to receive back a list of all the different files that belong to a folder. So it's going to be pretty much properties of all the files based on a SharePoint folder. But before we get started, guys, hit that like button. Give me a follow. Again, guys, hit that like button. Go ahead and hit it. Hit it now. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, guys, so again, those of you who are new, go revisit part one if you have to, but we're adding to our source code that we have. We have a file called Office 365 API. So we're gonna be adding to this file, right? That's ultimately what we're doing here. We're adding to it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and come down and just add it towards the end. We're gonna create a function and we're gonna call this function get file properties from folder, right? Cause that, so, and I'll explain to you on why we're doing it this way. If you receive back a, a um, file object, there's properties associated already. But if we're receiving it back on a uh, receiving a specific file object, um, you can specify you want properties from from that file object. But let's say you want to just retrieve back a list of whatever exists um, in a in a folder. Maybe for 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 instance, the what you want to know is well, which files are part of that folder. Well, this function that we're creating is going to give it back a list. And you could just do a count and that could kind of tell you right away. All right, there's four, four files in there. Um, you know, or you want to be able to determine which one is the newest file, or you want to be able to determine, um, just the date, like when were these files even created? When were they updated? You want to get some of that metadata, right? For each file, this will provide that information for you. Even versions, the, which version of the file uh, belong to, you know, um, it's part of that file. Maybe it's already in version five, version one, whatever it is. So let's kind of walk through and I'll kind of show you. Uh, let me zoom in. It's actually kind of small. I don't need this. Let me minimize this down. All right, cool. I think that's good enough. All right. So now what we're going to do, let's create, we're going to call this object files list. And what we're going to do here, we're going to call our get files function that we have. So this function that we have here, get files list, which if I go up on top, we have this, this is something that we created from towards like part one, I believe. And what this is doing is give us, giving us back a list of all the files, right? You know, it's not specifying specific properties, but just giving it back in the form of objects. So pretty much we're getting back a list of every file object. That's it, right? Now from, from this file object, since we're get, are getting back a list of files and you know, in a object, uh, not in a string format, but in an object format, we're going to be able to extract key properties that we want. And we're going to ultimately compile a, a dictionary of these properties. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So I'm going to create a proper uh let's call it list it's going to be empty because we're going to add on to it and let's go ahead and do a for loop so we're going to do for file in files list and then let's create a file dictionary oops and inside this dictionary we're going to go ahead and add some key properties that we're going to want to capture. So for example, the first one is going to be file ID. And this would be file 
uh, unique ID. Okay. So every file has some kind of unique ID relate related to it. So that's just so this is giving us the unique ID. If there's a need beyond that to use it in other ways, then you know one again you could pull this list, get the ID, then do some other process if needed. But nevertheless, it's included in this. Uh, we're going to capture that information. So the next thing will be file name. Now this this is very key. This is something that by all means everybody would want, right? If you want to get a list of all the files in a folder, file name is key. We want that. Um, the next thing would be a major version, a major version. So anytime you create a new file by default, it's version one. If you're making updates, changes, things of that nature, that's where you'll see the version ultimately change, uh, depending on what, what kind of changes and all of that that's happening. But nevertheless, if your organization is managing versions to that level then yeah it makes sense to to uh, retrieve that information so that would be included as well the other one will be minor versions again same thing if your organization is managing those kind of changes this will be included so you're you know what it is another one that i think would be somewhat um valuable is a file size like how big the file is you know so uh this could come in handy from a sense of if you're i don't know let's say there's some a uh, good example to be you're trying to determine the size of a folder and you want to find out which file has the biggest size like and you know which one which, without having to go in manually one by one and look at all the folders uh the next one is going to be time time created again same thing this one's always good to capture if you want to know how old a file is Especially if you're doing some sort of um, some sort of way to identify, like, all right, I want to capture the new files, old files, or maybe I only want to capture files that are 30 days older. That you could kind of build some logic to identify which ones are 30 days within the 30 day range, and then those you could like capture and do something with. And then, of course, last um, uh, modified. And again, this just shows when the file was last modified. I mean, pretty straightforward. So for now, those are the the uh, property that we're going to capture. Um, and then what we're going to end up doing, we're going to go ahead and call our property. Oops. Uh, properties list. And then we're going to append this dictionary okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clear out the dictionary so when we iterate over again it's a clean um, empty object and then we we'll just add on to it again oops and that is it man after that we're gonna then return uh, the property list and that's it. So ultimately, we're going to get back by calling this function. We're going to end up getting back a list, a list that contains all the files that we have. And uh, of course, these properties, which are the ID, name, version, size, create time. Pretty much what we're going to be returning back. Um, so I think this is it, man. This is all we need. So now let me go ahead and create a, a file. And let me call this file. Um, call it file properties from folder okay so now they just go ahead and let's bring in we're gonna have to bring in the office 365 api file and then we're going to import in sharepoint because sharepoint again is our class that we have over here yep now remember when we call this we already have all of these variables that are being assigned again if, you, if you're not familiar with how we did this, go and reference part one. We kind of walked through the process, but we're assuming that you already watched that part. So we're not going to go in detail. Uh, let's go ahead and import system. And then I'm going to do folder name. 
Uh, but you know what? Before I do that, this let's just go ahead and call this so argument. Oops, args one is going to be SharePoint folder name. All right. So that's ultimately what we're gonna. The, our argument gonna be the uh, SharePoint name. So in this case, it will be system args one. Right. So not zero. The reason why not zero because in Python, when you call Python. And then you got to specify your file that you're going to execute. That file is argument zero. Anything after that is argument one, two, and three. So just FYI. Um, I'm going to create a function. So I've been told in the comments that these examples that I'm providing, it's, it's an overkill. And honestly, um, I agree. I totally agree, right? I'm not going to disagree. It is an overkill. But I do it because I know in certain cases, these examples for some people, they could literally take as is and, and implement it in their, um, in their process, or they could literally take the script and just have some sort of scheduler running that would just run it. And then it would do what they want to do. Right. And they don't even have to do anything to it. So that's kind of the reason why I do it that way. Again, is it? I totally agree. I'm not saying that is not because because it is. But again, I know that's the case, and I'm I'm fine with it, right? Um. So, all right, I'm gonna create this function. Yeah, I don't know why I'm calling this function. It's not, it's not gonna be called get latest file. So this function that I'm gonna create, we're gonna call it uh get um properties by folder right that's what we're going to call it get properties by folder and then we're going to end up calling sharepoint get property file properties by folder and then we're going to end up specifying the the folder whatever this argument is that's what we're going to specify over here and then what i'm going to do i'm going to do a for loop because remember we're getting back a list a list is what we're getting back so let's iterate over i'm going to call this file in file properties and then I could just for now let's just go ahead and and print file that's all we're gonna do right so to finish it off um, if name equals main then we could run this get properties by folder then of course this would be our folder name argument so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run it so i'm going to call python oops so python or you know what before i run it though let's go ahead and go to uh sharepoint i'm going to sales so as you could tell i have five files in here Right, CSV, JSON, another CSV, Excel, and Excel. Different types too, right? They've been modified different times and so on. Um, like for example, the Excel, let me go and click on, let's click on this Excel. I don't know what it is, but let's click on it. Let's say I'm gonna make some kind of change. I don't know, I'm gonna change this to 0.9. Cool, it should have saved automatically. And then now I could kind of come back, hit refresh and um did it change and which file did i modify was it this one or the other one it says modify june 10th uh let's click it again oh it didn't change my bad there we go they did change 0 0.09 so i'm not sure what happened here but it did change so let me close out of it let me close out of it let me hit refresh there it goes. See, got modified. It took a while, but it's been modified. It looks good, right? A few seconds ago. So we should see that reflected when we pull our data. But so we should get back five, um, a list of five. But let's test out a few things, right? Before we run it, I want to iterate over each one, right? Which is number one. But also, what I want to do here in the very beginning, I'm going to do a print, and I want to say um, file count. And this would be links file properties. So again, it should give us back five because that's what we know what it is, right? It's five. Um, what else? Oops. 
and then this will give us back the row of each one. So let's let's take a look at it, right? So it's Python file properties. Then again, my first argument here is going to be the directory pass, the folder pass. So if I go back to my SharePoint, it's going to be data 2022 sales. So I'm going to type in data 2022 sales. Hit enter. Let's see what we get. Cool. So we got something back. Let's expand this out. Boom, right there. File count equals five. Perfect, because we know we have five. And it did give us back a file count as five. So again, this would be one of those good um, function to call, if, especially if you're trying to keep count of how many files you have in a folder. And boom, right away, right? You could get that. Um, I mean, it will give you back a list, but I got a list back of the, the amount of files that, that are in there. And then, of course, we could look at each one. Here's one file. We have a file ID. Here's the GUID. We have the file name, which is the 50 contacts CSV. And then we have the version, version one, minor version zero, file size, um, 64667, which is pretty much 6K. There's a file size. Then, of course, we have the timestamps. So let's look at the one that we modified, which would have been this guy right here, right? This one was the one that we modified. So we look at the created time. Created time would have been uh, June 11th, 2022. The time modified is what we just did right now, which is um, September 4th uh, time frame. So here's the thing. It's really not September 4th, but this is UTC time. So also keep that in mind. This time that you see here is UTC time. So you're trying to convert it to your... Uh, whether it be Central, Eastern, Pacific, you're going to have to do the mass on it to convert it to um, your local time. But this is all UTC time. This one does have a version. If you look at the major version change, it's in major version 3. And then, of course, minor version 0. The file size, 21K. And then, of course, you have your GUID. So, again, this will give you back, just by specifying the folder, the pass, you could get back properties uh, a list of all the files and properties and then from there you could do whatever you need to do with it, right? Um, but nevertheless though this you know will give you that information um, Which is pretty straightforward nothing complex, you know, right pretty straightforward So again guys this was a this actually came in as a request somebody requested about Hey, can you make a video showing how we could get some of the properties? Um, and there may be, may, I may make another video where we add more properties, but for now, I wanted to just add some of the least basic core properties uh, to this function. And then, you know, that seemed beneficial. So again, guys, if there's, um, I, I, may, I am putting some things to work. Well, we, I will be creating a Discord server soon. I will, we're going to be building a small team um, of people kind of helping out uh, when it comes to some of the requests that I'm getting. So you're going to start seeing uh, potentially you may see other people working more behind the scenes, I guess. Maybe you may not see them in the videos and maybe I shouldn't say you're going to see them, but um, there's some things that are in the works and in order to kind of to speed up expedite the process of making more videos um doing more testing and trying to solve some of these problems i'm starting to get more and more requests you know i'm going to be assembling a, a team behind the scenes that's going to help out to do some of the testing and things of that nature so we could push out more and more content uh of solving the problem that we're getting right these are all questions that we're getting from viewers so that's the plan. That's what we're trying to do. And that's what I'm going to be working on. I know it's not going to be easy tasks and I know it's going to take time, you know, but I think it's going to be all worth it. Again, guys, give me a follow, hit that um, like button and appreciate it, guys. And y'all take care. Peace.